Welcome back to the Great Compromise Podcast. With me, as always, is GOP Jim, and I am Victoria the Democrat. Our podcast is about the death penalty today, and we're going to get into that shortly. But before we do, you may not have realized, today is our 10th episode. So to celebrate, next week we'll be doing a Q&A episode. You can contact us with your questions, either politically or personally, whatever your questions are about, we want to answer them. So you can tweet us, email us. Facebook even. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then we will answer, you know, what questions we can next week. Perfect. I'll get us started with the death penalty then. Excellent. So I support the death penalty for the worst of the worst criminals. And let's talk about why. The death penalty serves three objectives. General deterrence, specific deterrence, and retribution. The first, general deterrence, is the message that gets sent to the people who are thinking about committing heinous crimes that they shouldn't do it, or else they might end up being sentenced to death. The second, specific deterrence, is specific to the guilty criminal. It simply means that the person who is subjected to the death penalty won't be alive to harm other people. And the third goal, retribution, is an expression of society's right to make a moral judgment by imposing a punishment on a wrongdoer befitting the crime he has committed, and in doing so, providing justice to their fam- to the victims and to the victim's loved ones. According to Michael Summers, professor at Pepperdine University, our recent research shows that each execution carried out is correlated with about 74 fewer murders the following year. The study examined the relationship between the number of executions and the number of murders in the United States for the 26-year period, from 1979 to 2004, using data from publicly available FBI sources. There seems to be an obvious negative correlation in that when executions increase, murders decrease, and when executions decrease, murders increase. This is a clear case that general deterrence is effective. As far as specific deterrence, the death penalty is the ultimate way of ensuring they do not commit these crimes again. But you could argue that life in prison does the same thing. And that's true to a certain extent. So let's say we outlaw the death penalty. And let's say we throw the worst criminals in jail for life without parole. One day, could be tomorrow, could be years from now, someone is going to come along and say that life without parole is too harsh. And then we have those heinous criminals going free once again. Now, this is a hypothetical, but it's not an unrealistic one. The worst of the worst criminals should have no opportunity to be free, no matter how small that chance. And of course, the third goal is retribution. Now, this one is a little more subjective. The families and friends of the victims des- deserve justice. Everyone can agree to that. Allowing the loved ones to finally rest easy, knowing that a terrible criminal can no longer hurt anyone else. How can we deny them that? They deserve justice. True justice. And isn't that the entire point of our justice system? This week, I'm on the con side. I am against the death penalty. The death penalty disproportionately affects certain groups. Studies show that the mentally ill, people of color, and the poor make up the majority of death row inmates. In the United States, between 5 and 10% of prisoners on death row have a severe mental illness, according to Mental Health America. As for racial groups, despite making up only 13% of the U.S. population, black people make up over 40% of the prisoners with the death sentence. When researchers take a deeper dive, they discover patterns of discrimination based on race. According to the United Nations, the poor are also disproportionately affected by the death penalty on a global scale. They are less likely to get good representation, and the system is biased against them. Even though these groups are not committing the most crimes, they are the ones receiving the most severe punishment. Secondly, the death penalty does not deter crime. The fact that it doesn't prevent crime may be the most significant reason why the death penalty is wrong. Many people believe that while the death penalty isn't ideal, it's worth it if it dissuades potential criminals. The American South has the highest murder rate in the country and oversees 81% of the nation's executions. In states without the death penalty, the murder rate is much lower. 
There are other factors at play, but the fact remains that no studies show capital punishment is a deterrent if the death penalty is not only inhumane, discriminatory, and arbitrary, but it often claims innocent lives and doesn't even prevent crime. Then why should it still exist? It's disappearing from legal systems around the world, so it's time for all nations, including the U.S., to end it. Lastly, the death penalty costs more than incarceration. A murder trial takes much longer when the death penalty is an issue than when it's not. Litigation costs, including the judges, prosecutors, public defenders, court reporters, and high cost of briefs, are mostly covered by the taxpayer. Extra costs of separate death row housing and additional security in court and elsewhere are included. In 1982, a study showed that where the death penalty to be introduced back to New York State, the cost of capital trial alone would be more than two times the cost of a life term in prison. It was reintroduced in New York and then found unconstitutional and not reintroduced again, in part because of the cost. In Maryland, they compared capital trial costs with and without the death penalty, and found that the death penalty cases cost approximately 42% more than non-death sentence. A 1993 study of the costs of North Carolina's capital punishment system showed that litigating a murder case from start to finish adds an extra $163,000 to what it would cost the state to keep the convicted offender in prison for 20 years. The extra cost goes up to $216,000 per case when a first-degree murder trial and their appeals are all considered, many of which do not end with a death sentence and an execution. Thank you, Victoria. Interesting points. So I, I think it's important for me to, to reiterate at the top here that I, I don't just support the death penalty getting thrown out willy-nilly, right? Um, I think it should be reserved for the worst of the worst criminals. Um, the Ted Bundys of the world, you know what I mean? The people who are incapable of being reformed have done such heinous crimes that this is the only punishment befitting their crimes, okay? And I think you had some good points at the beginning when you said um, how the death penalty right now disproportionately hurts certain groups. Um, That's true, and I think it's being overused a little bit well, it sounds like in the South it's probably being overused more than a little bit, but I I don't exactly know those numbers just from what you told me. Thank you. Yeah, I was surprised too by all of the statistics when I researched how it dispro- disproportionately affects groups. Um, I knew that there was a high occurrence of minorities and mental illness, but I didn't know just how high. And I think that's definitely really concerning. Um, We need to make sure that we are giving people the services they need and not just executing them because it's a faster solution. Yeah, well, it's not even necessarily a faster solution. I mean, it's faster than them spending out their days in prison. But as you said, like the death penalty legal process takes a very long time and for good reason. We need to make sure they are actually genuinely guilty of the crimes they committed. Unfortunately, this is not always the case, but it's it's very important that they are absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, guilty of these crimes. And so these um, these trials take longer. And I think it's also interesting that this may be the only time you bring up the uh, financial argument. (laughs) I knew you would like that. (laughs) It's usually the other way around. So. Is it the best argument that because we're making sure that they actually committed these crimes, like really, really making sure in order to, you know, follow through on these executions that it costs a little more? Um, Not just a little more, though. Well, yeah, it does. It it costs more. Like quite a lot. And I think it's interesting that a life sentence is cheaper than an execution. Possibly. Um... You know, I as I was researching this, I was thinking, you know, taxpayers, we pay for all this crap, right? But we, we pay for people in prison. We pay for their food. We pay for them to, to be able to exist there. So it's like, I'm going to use Ted Bundy again. We send Ted Bundy to jail, and then the victim's families 
are paying for his housing and food. You know what I mean? It's like, I know that's just how the prison system works, and I understand that, but when these worst of the worst criminals get to get to live out their days in prison it's not enough and it's like still damaging to the families of their victims do you see what i'm saying i do see what you're saying but it's one of those things where does society have the power to end a life is that ethical and i know if somebody close to me was murdered i'd be torn up about it but that doesn't mean that my rage and my high emotions need to be like involved in the decision process like yes it's very painful for you to lose someone and for there to be um still like the existence knowing that that person is still out there like alive not like out in society but alive and in prison but I don't believe in an eye for an eye, right? Like, they were terrible, and they've lost their freedom. Mm-hmm. Well, you may not believe in an eye for an eye, but 64% of Americans believe the death penalty is morally justified when someone commits a crime like murder, according to a 2021 Pew Research poll. And so that is a majority of the country, a 64%, certainly. That's... That means even some Democrats are pro-death penalty. And do you think that a society that respects life should deliberately be killing human beings? Not innocent human beings. Obviously, this is why we have such a long, drawn-out legal process. And again, this is not... If you kill one person, you know, I don't even necessarily want to give you the death penalty either. It's the absolute worst serial killers or, like, serial rapists or just the the scum of the earth who cannot ever come back from these actions. And they deserve punishment. They deserve to live out their lives in prison and not be able to harm anyone ever again. I'm not defending someone that is that grotesque in their actions, but I think history has shown that we've gotten it wrong and we don't have the technology that we'll have in 10 years, right? That could absolve someone. Or let's talk about how like the media frenzy changes public opinion and then public outcry changes the judicial system. Like Mm -hmm. it can get really messy. Mm -hmm. And I think too many vulnerable populations get pulled into it where the impoverished, the mentally ill, the minorities are like just too I would say like picked on by by this system and I can't say what is perception and what is fact and I don't want to take that gamble with somebody's life I I see what you're saying and that's why I want to keep it rare just for the worst of the worst um to me it it feels like you kill one person and you go to jail right And then each murder after that is a freebie because there is no worse punishment than going to jail for life. Whereas if we have the death penalty for these people, these repeat murderers, it's, it's, it's justice. You know, there's something more to punish them with than if they just killed one person. You know what I mean? Like we shouldn't have freebie kills (laughs) without proper punishment, which is kind of how it is. Well, actually, no, the death penalty is legal right now. But it would kind of how it would be if we repealed the death penalty. Um, Freebie kills. That's an interesting idea. I think that, like my, my argument stated, the death penalty is not dissuading people from crime, right? So, yes, it is a higher form of punishment. It's literally life-ending. But that's not dissuading people from murdering, right? Like, well, I found that one study um, that said it was, and that was my first argument, the general deterrence. Um, I don't know how relevant that is anymore. It started in 1979, ended in 2004, but um, I, I did find that. You may have found newer data. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I found that in the States, with the death penalty, crime is not lower than in states without it general crime like first degree murder crime 
Okay. Are there less serial killers? I don't have that information. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't either. I, I'm, I would be curious to see that information. Yeah. Um, because really that's, again, what I would use the death penalty for. Those are the people. If we can deter serial killers, great. I'd, I'd love that for us, but I don't, I don't think the death penalty deters crime in general. I, I wouldn't say it does that. This might be a tangent, so feel free to redirect me, okay. but do you think that serial killers are as much of an issue today as mass shootings? I hear way more about mass shootings than any serial killers. That's more like referring to the 80s when I hear about those like killers that have gone down in history. Apparently, at any given time in the United States, there's like 25 to 50 active serial killers. Not a great number, if I have to be honest. <laughs> I'm really surprised to hear that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, deterring more or deterring them from continuing to kill, I'm all for that. If However we can do it. Do we know that we're deterring them? Um, well, I have a source that says yes, and you have a source that says no, so no, we don't know if we're deterring them. <laughs> we don't know, and I think there's a certain amount of um, ego and like a superiority complex that goes into the mind of a serial killer, right? Like they are psychotic. They're not concerned about consequences. They think they're above being able to be caught, right? Like... I think there's a bit of narcissism at play there. So I'm not sure the death penalty it is at all keeping them up at night. Do you consider being a psychopath a mental illness? I do. You do? Yeah. Okay. Is it curable? Probably not in most, if any, cases. But officially, being a sociopath is in the DSM. Okay, because you mentioned, you know, mental illness earlier among the groups that are unfairly targeted, but if psychopaths are out there killing people, I wouldn't say that's unfair targeting. Right. I would not lump them into a minority or, you know, someone that's treated unfairly. I think that being a serial killer, I'm not overwhelmed with empathy for anybody that's going to um, earn themselves that title. So is there any situation where you would support the death penalty at all? Going back to Ted Bundy, mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of someone like that being around. Or I remember there were accounts of Ted Bundy escaping jail, and mm -hmm. it's a disaster. I don't want any part of that in our society. But I also think we have to understand the ethics at play here and that just because one person is taking lives doesn't mean that we have the power to do that as a form of justice, right? Like, death as a form of justice doesn't seem ethical to me at all. Okay. Again, I think there are some cases where that's the only ethical solution. That is the only justice we can give the victims' families. But again, I, I think it should be rare. Yes. And we're already, you know, somewhat moving towards that as a society. So I think everyone can probably agree that's a good idea. I can agree to that, that it should be rare, if ever at all. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Great Compromise podcast. Just as a reminder, next week's episode is going to be a Q&A episode. So get your questions into us. You can tweet us, Facebook us, email us. Spotify should have a Q&A section this week. Whatever you want to do, get your questions in, we'll answer them, and we will see you next week.